So here's something I use quite frequently in my workflows, which is to calculate ray direction. Um, and this one's spe specifically for um, use with the ray uh, SOP. Uh, but of course, you, you could you could use the the vector attribute for anything anything you like. It's not just for the ray SOP. But my primary idea and the goal for uh, wrapping this up as an HDA, I'll show you what's inside in a bit. So um, wrapping this up as an HDA for me was uh, well, let's uh, let's have a convenient way of uh, dealing with this um, this vector attribute, um, which is this top section up here, and have it uh, basically output it under a certain name, and then just wire this into the ray uh, Go to the ray and under direction attribute, just paste the attribute, and so now the ray uh, ray should use uh, should use those vectors. Um, okay, so that's good, um, except um, I already had this um, uh, this bit, uh, and so the, this, this uh, math going on, and so it was quite um, simple to just have some extra functionality. Um, and um, the extra functionality has to do with projection and, well, projecting the geometry or arraying the geometry, which is exactly what the ray saw. Uh, can do, and in no way is, is, is this HDA a replacement for the ray SOP. It's just that in my case, I hardly ever use, uh, well, 95% of these parameters uh, in here, while at the same time, um, um, I miss some functionality. Or, of course, you can achieve anything with uh, a few uh, nodes, maybe two ray SOPs uh, and an attribute transfer, and you could have the same functionality that's that's in here in this um, section down here but um, I mean one of the goals of HDAs is to simplify uh, node graphs so uh, that's kind of that was kind of the second the second um, uh, motivation for this one I'll show you how it works and what it does if you like it feel free to download it from my Gumroad page I'll make it available for free and I'll put a link in the description. So before uh, before we wire those, uh, before we um, satisfy those required inputs here, this is what I have is test geometry. So that's a sphere, a grid, and a box, classic. And out up here, I have a, a null and a camera. And the null and the camera, um, well, those are objects that can be referenced in in the ray direction HDA. It's got two modes of operation. One's the origin, and the other one's the direction. And so I usually stick with the origin mode. Um, the direction mode, you have to, you just have to specify in direction mode. You just have to specify a direction, uh, and that can be the world or object space, depending if if this if this object, because this object also has transforms, right? If if those change. Um, and you're in world space, your direction will be still in world space. If you switch to object space, then that direction will remain relative to what's going on in here. Uh, but anyway, direction is direction, and that's that means all your rays will be parallel. Could be useful, uh, of course. In origin mode, you either specify an origin object or a position in, in uh, world space. And so my preferred option is the object mode, and so any object with transforms on it um, will do. So like a null, for example. And so let's wire our test sphere in here, and voila, there's the direction vector. And here's here's the null. If you that's obviously this is the null. And so if you move the null around, oh, then the direction vector changes. Okay, so what else? Well, my preferred way of doing this is with a camera, uh, because a camera is an object with transforms, and you can also look through it. So in the viewport, which, which is a nice, convenient way of dialing in your uh, direction vectors through the, uh, the the viewport. I quite like that. Um, so what's next? Um, so far, so good. I mean, this could just then be uh, passed on to the ray SOP, and the ray SOP will do its, uh, its bidding. There we go. 
it's transformed the, the, the points onto the collision geometry using the ray direction coming from the HDA. Okay, <coughs> um, we could do the same here. If we enable project onto collision geometry and transform points, and that's exactly the same. So a little convenience here, you kind of save one node, or I save one node just because in most cases I do not care about the rest of um, parameters found on the ray SOP. But for me, the, uh, the big one here is the mask. And the mask, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, if I just put down the null. And my second output of the ray direction is uh, the collision geometry. So the collision geometry now gets a mask, or a mask where uh, the projection uh, or where the collision would be happening. Of course, you could say, well, just an attribute transfer could do that. Uh, right? I mean, an attribute um, transfer, transfer, yeah, here it is. An attribute transfer, uh, geometry to transfer attribute 2 is the collision geometry, and then the rate geometry comes in here. You transform the points, and so here you have to put an attribute on the transformed uh, points of the, the ray geometry and transfer that attribute onto the collision geometry, which is the grid. Great, no problem, that's a perfectly valid way of doing it. <coughs> uh, then, what about uh, the third input? Say there was something, or you didn't want to transform, for example, your points. Well, good luck transferring an attribute that way um, for where it's, it's colliding. Of course, you could do that with a ray SOP, and you could, well, in fact, you're probably going to need, um, yeah, a ray SOP and switch those two uh, inputs so that you have the, the vector on the collision geometry and then array the collision geometry on to the so called to the sphere. In this case, to the sphere. But okay, let's not complicate this unnecessarily. Um, so, how about if you had something, an object, in between the ray geometry and the collision geometry, which you wanted to have, uh, well, which you wanted to to uh, to um, to also project or to exclude from the mask? And so that's what this does. If you wire the third input, so it's going to trace. Uh, an occlusion geometry, I called it yeah, occlusion geometry, the third input, so the occlusion geometry which is found in between uh, an origin and a, um, um, a ray geometry and the collision geometry will be reflected in the mask that's output uh, in uh, the second output. <coughs> okay, so how does that work? Well, that's that's what takes care of the whole thing. That's that those two attribute triangles do the heavy lifting. Everything up here is just checking uh, what's going on, checking what's uh, incoming uh, as uh, collision and occlusion geometry. Um, nothing too complex. Uh, just um, let's just break it open and uh, see um, see how it works. It's quite straightforward. These two are almost entirely the same, with the exception of the, the final bit, which is for the occlusion uh, geometry in this projection. So this one will output the mask, and this one will output your vectors on the ray geometry. So basically in one, in one HDA you have kind of uh, the two worlds. In one case you, you get your ray geometry prepared for uh, the ray SOP, if you'd like to use it somewhere downstream. And in the other output, you get your uh, mask for the collision geometry. And so, it's just to show you in my workflows, what I tend to, to do with such a mask is something like uh, an attribute blur. Just let's blur, attribute blur, yes. Actually, the blur just to smooth it out a little. Mask. And let's ignore this for a second. Um, let's do something like this. Um, and 
Um, let's say this one. Okay, so so just drawing some some um, uh, curves on onto the collision geometry using that mask. I, I mean, you, there's a thousand ways you can uh, achieve the same thing. Uh, what I tend to like about this is that if you choose your camera, you can just move around, and, and that will change, of course, the the projection or aware or or the, the collision or where that hits the collision geometry. If that object's moving, that would also change um, well, what's going on in the in the in the background, so to speak. And also, if you enable this, that would also uh, well, kind of uh, or change change your mask, so to speak. In this case, let's not completely eradicate our mask. So let's do something like this. So yeah, I, I guess these are the kind of workflows that I that I had in mind when uh, when I was when I wrapped this 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 bit into an HDA. Um, I think that's all. If uh, if you have any questions, oh yeah, there's something else here. A uh, little convenience uh, just before I go, which is uh, if you have this selected, there's a handle. And by the way, if you choose to use the position, um, there's a handle. If you show handle, uh, this handle which will appear in the viewport is for this uh, parameter. So you can just move this one and change the origin. Yeah, of course, you can switch back and forth. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, I hope you find it useful. If you, if you feel like um, there is room for improvement, just let me know. If you have a question, leave it down below and uh, in the comments section. Um, yeah, that's it. Good luck. Cheers.